Hello guys, welcome to realin-academy.com. In this 10-minute session, please allow me to discuss with you guys the phenomenon called web ballooning or web breathing. For those not real SPHD wells, web ballooning is not unusual. Despite that, sometimes it still causes confusion, empty, and incurs additional web costs. So what is web ballooning? Let's take a look at this visual. It tells thousand what. Now everything is started. Let's turn the pumps on. Okay, now pumps are running. So when we are drilling or circulating, there is annular friction loss, AFL, in the annulus. This is the annulus. Please follow the pointer. All right? This AFL charges up the fracture in the wear ball. And mud is lodged into those fractures. Imagine we install a pressure gauge on the BHA in the annulus, we will see this pressure gauge go up. In other words, the fracture is taking mud, right? And ECD starts from the flow line here. Here is flow line. ECD is increased all the way along the web bar up to the top of BJ. Up to the top of BJ, then generally, this is the highest part of ECD in the web ball, BHA around the BHA line. Okay. So when we stop the pump, let's see what happens. Turn pumps off. We see standby pressure drops and IPL. This pressure guys comes down and the fractures relax. They close up and they spill mud that they took before back into the web ball. And we will see this mud return at surface and the flow line. This is all about wear ball ballooning. And all it has to do is with ECD or AFL, annular friction loss. Now let's take a closer look at ECD. ECD stands for equivalent circulating density. It equates mud weight plus annular friction loss AFL. So it is in range between midweight and midweight plus AFL. The highest AFL is at the BHA range. So therefore, let's, let's click here, let's click here on the reply to see. ECD is increased from the top of the web ball until the top of BHA, and it is highest at the BHA along the BHA range. Okay, and the fractures are usually the issue. This is the weakest part of the formation. So this is where we can look at this red dot here on the ECD chart here. So this is where we particularly pay attention because we usually have lost incurred somewhere around the, near the shoe. All right. So now, what are the factors affecting the ECD? As said before, ECD equates midweight plus AFL. So in here, I write IPL, sorry. IPL also stands for annular pressure loss, same as AFL. So it is midweight for sure affect ECD and the mud velocity, like viscosity of the mud. The flow rate that we use to pump, the higher the flow rate, the higher the ECD is, the higher AFL is, or IPL. And the annular clearance between the AH, the, the BHA, and the wear ball. So this annulus, the tighter the annulus, the higher the ECD. So the BHA configuration and the annulus clearance affect the ECD. And guess what? RPM, the rotation of the real screen also affect the ECD. What do you think? Higher RCD, higher, e, uh, higher, higher RPM, higher ECD, or contrary? Take your guess. You can drop me an email to discuss more about that one. And how do we determine ECD while drilling? Right, this is a silly question, but I still need to capture it in here so just in case somebody may ask. All right, we have in the on the BHA we have MLWD tools. They usually have the PWD function incorporated in in that. So we take the PWD which gives us ECD. And sometimes if the BHA has battery, it will give also give, it will give the reading of ESD, 
equivalent static density when the pumps are off. And remember, all the MLW2s, they have the window of operating flow rate. If you pump below the operating flow rate, you won't see any pulse, you won't have any signal from the tool, so and you won't have the PWD reading. So make sure you pump a little at the operating flow rate or a bit higher than that, so that the tool is powered up and you can have a good reading. Now, why do we bother with well ballooning? All right, it's just the formation returns flow it took. Simple, isn't it? Well, it's not that simple, but it's rather quite complicated in HPHD wells. Because if you mismanage or misinterpret the phenomenon, you may end up not picking up a kick. That's worst. Or you may take it as a kick while it's not a kick. And you go ahead and increase the mud weight to the Q-mud. You go ahead, you kill the well with whatever the approved method is. And then you drill with the higher mud weight. And then you end up getting caught with losses if you have a narrow drilling window. In a while. And you still have a return and you still have high certain pressure when you shut the well in. So the theory is simple, but in practice, it is another story. Now, let's say a pump connection or pumps off or flow check. And you see flow return is longer than before. And you suspect if the well is kicking or ballooning, then proceed with this chain of action. First thing first is shutting the well. Record shutting repair pressure, shutting case in pressure, and pick in as your normal practice. Quick check here. The case in pressure should never exceed shutting repair pressure. That's the first fact. Then track the flow return signature to compare with previous flow return signature. For HP, HD well, is a recommended and is a highly, highly crucial operation to take flow return signature on every connection. So look at the trend. The trend is a telltale. Don't look at a particular number. Okay. Next, you compare the shirt and drip by pressure versus your IPL or AFL to determine the likelihood of the well kick or ballooning. And next, ask the question. That did you have dynamic losses before? The answers of those questions will help you determine if the well is kicking or ballooning. And based upon that, you will establish a suitable or right course of action to handle the situation. Now look at this flow return signature. Or another name for us is flow fingerprint. On every connection in HP HD well, this is highly recommended for all questions so when you have a normal drain back okay click on this normal drain back you see okay so this green line here is pumps on pumps running and then pumps off okay so you have a little delay when you start the pump for the load to flow to return a flow line and while pumps are running you have constant return flow return here at flow line when you when you turn the pumps off, you still have a de delay in the flow return. You still have some returns. That's the drain back, right? And then the flow slowly, slowly reduce down to zero. All right, this is normal drain back. Simple, right? Now, what happens if you have ballooning, which is caused by ECD? Same as before, you start pumps, you run the pumps. You have the flow returns. And now in here, look at this navy blue. This is the normal drain back. And now this purple line here is the ballooning. You still have residual flow return here. And it may stay up a little bit or may reduce very slowly. Right? But then eventually it will come down to zero. So this is ECD. It takes a longer time here. All right. So you may suspect here around this area where the pointer is here. Is a kick, right? You measure in the well here. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. If you're in doubt, shut the well in. That's the recommended, and that's actually the ruler's responsibility to shut the well in if he has any doubt. All right, now look at the thermal expansion. Thermal expansion is another norm in HVHT drilling. All right, pumps on, pumps off. Now, thermal expansion 
you see that the flow reduces a bit faster than ECD. But then it takes a long time to go down to zero. It may have some little spikes up in here, but then eventually it will come down to zero, but it may take a long time. All right, so this is just a representative picture and, and graph, right? It's not exactly like this. ECD may be longer than thermal expansion. This is just representative. So don't take it as accurate 100% in here. And what about kick flow? All right, pumps are running. When you shut the pumps off, you have flow returning here still going. It may go down, but then eventually it will come up. If you don't shut the well, it will come up, come up higher and higher, and then you have a blowout. All right, so you have various four different signatures in here of the flow return regime. So on every connection, on every flow check, make sure you have this chart on. Take it from the mid logger, get it on your screen, and take a good comparison on the trend. Trend is the key in here. Now let's go back in here to AFL, ECD, or APL. All right. So how to work out AFL or APL? As we said before, the ECD equates midweight plus AFL or APL in PPG. So AFL or APL in PSI now, we will work on the equation. This is the classic equation, but the whole, take the whole TVD times the AFL in PPG times 0.052. Remember, whole TVD is in feet. So now look at the key. If the shut and drip by pressure, which is in PSI, is less than IFL in PSI, it is highly ballooning. But if the shut and drip by pressure is higher than IFL, it definitely is a wet kick. So now let's take a look at this example in here. If we are drilling with Midwest 17.1 BBC, and the ECD downhole measure is 17.7. So in right here, 17.7 minus 17.1, we have 0. 0.6. That is the IFL in here. IFL is equals 17.7 minus 17.1. Okay. The whole depth is has TVD 3,400 meter, and we got some losses while we're pumping at about 30 barrels an hour. This is just a figure on the example. So on the connection, right now the reader observes that flow signature varying from the previous connection flow. So what should be done now? First thing first is straighten the wire, take the recordings, and here are the recordings. Should be published at 240 psi. Should in casing in the range 230 to 240 psi and pick against two barrels. This is quite a good reader, isn't it? So the reader reports to the FSV. Should the DSV raise the mud weight and work out the Q mud weight and raise it up there and follow the Q method or not? To me, he should not do that. First thing first, he needs to work out AFL in PSI. As I said before, ECD equates mud weight plus AFL, right? So 17.1 plus AFL equates 17.7. So AFL in PPG is 0.6 PPG. So work out AFL in PSI is 348 PSI here. So now look, certain group by pressure is only 240 psi, which is a lot less than IPL 348 psi. So this case is highly likely the ballooning, not a wet kick. All right. If the DSV doesn't make this this comparison, and he goes ahead and he works out the Q mid weight now is 17.6, and then he goes ahead and increases the mid weight to this 17.6, I guarantee you, if he's running on HPHD wells. PPFG will be very narrow. Drilling window is narrow. He will have losses when he drill with this much, a lot of losses. And he will go reduce the loss and he will end up stuck between kick, loss, kick, loss. But this is not a kick in here. It is highly uh, the well ballooning. All right? So if it's a high balloon, a highly a ballooning, what should he do? All right? As we said, let's follow this chart in here. Okay, we shut in, we record, shut in, we get ECD from PWD2 and work out AFL. This, all this has been done, all right? And shut in, we get ECD from PWD2 and work out And shut in, we get ECD from is less than AFL in this example. And now he looks at, he looks at the shut in, we get ECD from PWD2 and work out AFL. If shut in, we get ECD from PWD2 and work out AFL, 
is less than certain group by pressure. All right? Then that's another guess. If he goes ahead and he looks back, did he, did he, did he have dynamic losses before? Yes. So he has three yes. Yes, certain group by pressure less than AFL. Yes, certain case in pressure less than certain group by pressure. Yes, he had dynamic losses before. So it is very much likely, very, very likely, most likely, where Bob Balloon is. So what he can do is keep the wear shut in, but he bleed off the pressure via the choke line to confirm the flow pattern. If the flow pattern decreases, it is definitely the wear Bob Balloon is. Then he can go ahead, keep bleeding off the pressure via the choke line until no flow show, and then he perform a flow check on the choke line, on the choke line, just for the precaution to confirm no flow. If everything is good, open the well up, go back to the with reduced ECD if possible. Now coming back on this flow chart, again, if you violate all of these three yes, okay, if you have certain group I pressure more than IFL or IPL, treat it as a record. If you have case and pressure, certain case and pressure more greater than certain group I pressure, treat it as a record. And if you didn't have dynamic losses before, then where is this return, this much built back before, uh, where is it from? Treat it as a record, all right? And even if you if you are bleeding up the pressure on the choke line and the flow doesn't decrease, so treat it as a record for precaution because the consequence of working is a lot worse than the consequence of wear ballooning. All right, along the course of handling the situation, if any doubt or unsure, shut the wear back in. Recheck the pressure regime. That's the key. No, no hesitation at all in shutting the wear in. That's the safe haven. All right, thank you guys. And I hope I explain, and this is a good explanation of where Bob Balloon is. If, as I said before, if you have any, any, uh, Question, recommendation, or queries, please forward them to my personal personal email address at lich.prime01 at See you soon in next video. Bye.